30 starters in this. And a look now at the course. Yeah, yeah. The early part of the course there from downtown Victoria goes one lap around the town. And you can see above the elevation of the course, you can it's see what Steve Monaghetti talked about. It's a very undulating course. The first two laps are exactly the same. And you can see the course rising and falling. Not dramatic rises, but gentle all the time. They're either climbing or falling. Then the course goes out along the front, along Ross Bay, along the coastal path, to Mac Micken Point where they turn. Even that part of the course is still very hilly. As I said, they're not dramatic hills, but they're enough, like Steve Monaghetti says, to sort out the best runners. And then back into downtown Victoria, where the crowds will be amassing on what is a great morning for marathon runners. They'd be absolutely delighted as they were driven down from the village today to find the course of the weather in such good condition. Some great names have won this race in the past. Waki Huri of Kenya is the reigning champion. De Costello, Australia in 82 and 86. He's working here with Australian television today. Jahangir of Tanzania. And the British runners who won. Donkey Wright won the first one in 1930 for Scotland. The famous Jack Holden for England in 1950. Joe McGee in that dramatic marathon across the water in Vancouver. One for Scotland, the race in which Jim Peters collapsed on the last lap. That was 54. It was Brian Kilby for England in 62. Jim Alder for Scotland in 66 in Jamaica. Jim's here. In 1970, Ron Hill for England. And in 74, Ian Thompson for England. Dave Butter, one of the three Englishmen in Cornwall Athletic Club, Colin Moore from Bingley, and Mark Hudspeth, coached by Jim Alder, the 66 winner, and this from Walter Perry. And there's the official temperature, 19 degrees, cloudy with light rain, which everyone was happy to find, and just a slight wind off the sea, 10 kilometers an hour, that's very, very pleasant when they go along the seafront. It will warm slightly as the race goes on, but 7 o'clock in the morning here, perfect time for marathon running. Countdown well on the way. Nice gentle start, slowly downhill. Gradient going away slightly from us around the inner harbour. Oh, that's good. That's awesome. Steve Monigatti, the Australian. Uh, a world set, 388. 494. Echo. Starting their own watches, keep a check on the pace. The course very well marked. Every kilometre is marked out. Painted on the road some days ago. And they've had plenty of time to check the course and run parts of it. There, we're overlooking the Inner Harbour and the Empress Hotel. And the runners proceed along here from the Legislative Assembly building, which, which used to be called the Bird Cages. That's why this particular bit of the course is called Bird Cage Walk, a la London Marathon, where we have the Bird Cage Walk sequence between the Houses of Parliament and uh, Buckingham Palace. So they're running in front of the Empress Hotel, which is the centre point of the tourist area in Victoria here and a very pleasant morning for marathon running. Good crowds out on the course already, but the crowds will probably do what they did in the women's race. They'll watch it on TV, and as the race reaches its peak, they'll gather more, and there'll be bigger, pe bigger crowds watching, more people coming into town to watch the finish of the marathon. 5.20 is Dale Rickson, 
of Wales, a member of the Cardiff Club. Best ever time set this year, two, minutes, two hours, 15 minutes, 41 seconds. He was 26th in this year's London Marathon. Of Victoria, they're running along Wharf Street, where all the activities take place. The seaplanes leave from here to go to Vancouver and Seattle. Very convenient service if you happen to live in Victoria. And all the restaurants and, and harbour side activities have been focused in this area over the last two weeks or so. 346, Ambala, Malawi, 158 is Mayor of Canada. 345 in Wahi Wah of Malawi. Two hours 22 miles. 507 Majuni, Uganda. Peter Mayer. Seen him several times in international competition. The Canadian. Won the Detroit Marathon last year. 10th of the World Championship also last year. 8th in the 91 London Marathon this year the winner of the Toronto Marathon. Likes to front run. He does like to get amongst the leaders. In fact, in Rome in the World Championship from 1987, he led for a long way. Always eager to be close to the front. Peter Mayer, who only took up running when he was about 25 or 26, and he only did it to give up smoking, which uh, <laughs> was a very successful move for him. And they go through the first kilometre there, as they come across the Blue Bridge, the Johnson Street Bridge, which goes across the gorge, which is the, the river that cuts the town of Victoria in half. Well, 3.21 the first uh, kilometre. I-20, direction of Wales. I won't mind the light rain too much. It can be quite refreshing. And the wind is light. Two Australians are right up there. Ronnie Getty is 21 and number two. Cordova Simon. Or rather, it's Sean Quilty. Wearing 26. Well, Peter Matt, almost inevitable wants to take it on. You could sense when Peter Mayer was running in that group that he was anxious to get out in the front. The first kilometre, 321, very pedestrian pace for the marathon, nice gentle start, nothing too dramatic, and the three Englishmen are in that group. Mark Hutzkus there, I can see number 245, Dave Buzzer, the blonde-haired man from Cornwall Athletic Club, spent a lot of his time, 231, training in Australia. And just behind Mark Hutzkus, the other Englishman, Colin Moore, who's been distinguished on the track and at half marathon at 10 miles. And this is his first serious international marathon. And he's uh, delighted to be here. He's really looking forward to the race. Colin Moore, class runner. If he can get his act together today, then Colin could feature in the later stages of this race. number 46, Pat Carroll, who Steve Monaghetti thinks is the biggest danger to him. 
Outside Carol, number 46, the Australian, who ran the marathon early on and then stepped down to the 5,000 metres for the Commonwealth Games in 1990 in Auckland. Ran quite well in Auckland. He's a class runner. He's run under 13.30 for 5,000 metres. Run under 7.50 for 3,000 metres. So he's probably the best overall distance runner in this field at the shorter distances. Whether he can get the marathon on a day like this, well, he's in good hands. He's coached by Pat Cloacy, who coached Rob Di Castella, the Australian who won the Commonwealth Games in 1982 in Brisbane. The ginger hair number 46 with the sunglasses on. And he's been very, very well prepared for this race. Been aiming for it for a long time. But the three Australians are in that group. The three Englishmen are in that group. The Welshman's in the group. The Canadian Peter Mayer, who's now just backed off the lead. And there's a group there of about 12 or 15 breaking clear of the second group. Night time, perhaps uh, not quite as severe as it looks on television. They're crossing the Bay Street Bridge there, going back into downtown Victoria. Peter Mayer knows this course very well indeed, run on it a few times. They head along here and then eventually they'll turn at the three kilometre mark. And they're watching, I've noticed they're looking at their watches. The road's very well marked. Each kilometre is available to them. It's written on the roadside, so there's nothing to worry about there. Pat Carroll on the outside looks very comfortable. Mark Hutspeth from Morbeth Harriers. Nicely placed there. His coach, Jim Alder, has told him his theory of marathon running is if you can run 2.12 in a major championship, you've always got a chance of a medal. And Jim came out here to encourage Mark and to watch him. And I imagine over the course of the day, we'll hear Jim Alder shouting at Mark from the side of the road. Jimmy Alder, one of the great characters of distance running. Always ran for the Walker Club himself. And very much uh, a major figure in that club tried to convince us the other night that they would win the national 12 stage road re relay in April in Sutton Park, Sutton Coalfield. Always a major event that for club athletes and internationals. They all turn out for the club. Early tip, Jimmy Alder, Morpus will win. I think there are one or two clubs that argue with that. However, that's a long way away. Pat Mayer, 158. 484 Dale Samuels St. Vincent. 346 Tambale. Malawi. 46 Carroll, Australia. Still very comfortable there, 9.48 for the first 3,000 metres. And they should all be just feeling it out, just getting their legs going, just relaxing out there. As we look back at number two, Simon Cordova, Simon of Antigua, whose best time is two and a half hours for the marathon. Well, I'm not sure he's right at the back. I'm sure there'll be a few people behind him. Date start. At the moment they're running about two hours, 15, 16 pace. We were talking about this last night. Some of the uh, ex international athletes who are gathered here seem to be agreed the winning time ought to be around 2.12. Brendan? That's what, everyone, that's what everyone's saying. The conditions are helpful today. The course is undulating by nature, and we'll add a couple of minutes on 
however fast you run because of its uh, twisting and climbing approach. And the two Englishmen look very relaxed there. Mark Hutzpeth, Morbid Harriers, and Dave Buzzer. Pat Carroll on the near side, very high stepping runner for a marathon runner. He's obviously very, very relaxed at this pace. Not a problem to him at all. He's running much faster than this. There we're looking a little bit further down the group, just at the back of the group. The two Kenyans running together. And the whole field, apart from one, are spread over a very short distance. Harmony's intent, which enters Chinatown, a very famous part of Victoria, part of the history of Victoria was when the Chinese settled during the gold rush in the 1850s and 1860s. Peter Mayer just taking them along here. They run two laps in, in the middle of the town, takes 20 kilometers, and then they head out along the front to a turning point and head back along the same course. And they use, they're thinking about this race of four sections of approximately 10 kilometers each. The first section is the one they're on now. The Molly Getty, the favorite on the far side of the dark glasses, yellow and green of Australia. Standing record in marathon running. Been out of form for a while with various problems, but very much back in business now. One of the fastest times in the world this year, anyone with Tokyo Marathon. Matt Carroll, 46, lives in Canberra. Only marathon this year was in the Beppo Marathon. I think clock two hours, 11 minutes, 51 seconds. Quite a crowd out for early in the morning. It's just about 20 past seven local time. Very good support as they turn left into Fort Street, known locally as Antique Row. And it's a very sedate pace. They're checking their times there. They're on their way to five kilometers. And that's the first split that they take serious notice of. On the inside, Steve Monaghetti and Sean Quilty of Australia moving through gradually. They're just looking at their watches, just checking the four kilometer split. But the next split of five kilometers is the one that means something to them. Very, very well supported out here on the course. The big group, and you can see the sunglasses of Steve Monaghetti in the green and yellow vest of Australia. Pat Carroll's had enough of his sunglasses, he's now carrying them on his head. But if you see someone who knows you, throw them away. that top shot you get the impression that uh, slowly they're building the pace Australia, on the far side, Montegatti, Australia. 
three Englishmen all together there. Fair haired Dave Buzzer. In the middle of the pack, Mark Hudsby. Just behind Buzzer is Colin Moore. Sixteen twenty seven for the first five thousand meters. And that's quite slow, it's a bit, a bit slower than we thought it would be, so that brings it out at around about 2 hours 18 pace, which is a very, very comfortable pace. Someone running alongside with some message to the runners. But that's, that's why the group's so big as it is, 2 hours 18 minutes pace, and most of them in this group will have run faster than that. in Canada 109 well light rain was promised you hardly call that light they won't mind it too much you always enjoyed running in rain Brendan I remember you, uh, that world record run at Crystal Palace at six miles, somebody said to you, it must have been uncomfortable in the rain, and you said, no, quite the reverse. Well, you can't get better conditions for distance running than rain. There's Pat Carroll getting irritated with the uh, people running out on the side of the road with drinks. They still need to take drinks on board. They won't need as many sponges because they'll obviously be kept cool by the rain. Dave Buzzer taking his drink and pouring a little bit on his head. Dale Rickson offering a drink to Pat Carroll, who wasn't interested in it. The Englishman and the Welshman should be very happy with these conditions, because when we, they sat in the stadium yesterday and watched the 10,000 metres, they were quite savage conditions for 10,000 metre running. Today, they've been very, very lucky indeed. Mark Hudspeth and Morbus in the northeast of England will be very, very used to these sort of conditions. I think camaraderie in the mirror ceases towards the end of the race, but uh, Dale Rickson having a little word with Dave Buzzer there. And with a smile. Pat Carroll on the near side, Australia, on front, followed by Hudsby. And Rickson of Wales. Colin Moore of England, the Buzzer of England. Sambala, Malawi. Deakin, Canada. The Mayor of Canada rather lost his face on the scramble for three. rain is coming straight down. Wind is a great problem on courses, but obviously very little today. Trees are quite still. This is a nice downhill bit as they head down Cook Street towards the front where they're going to turn and begin approaching downtown Victoria again. Pat Carroll looks very smooth. He said he's an under-distance runner. He's, he's probably the best 3,000 and 5,000 meter runner in this field. If it was a shorter distance than the marathon, you'd probably have a bet on Pat Carroll. Being a marathon, if you're a betting man, you'd have to put your life savings on Steve Monaghetti. Steve's been third in the Commonwealth Games in 1986. Second last time in Auckland, New Zealand. And is today going to be his golden day? slowed a fraction to around a 2 hours 18 pace. The 
there's been a tendency in the past couple of seasons, two or three seasons, Brandon, not just in the marathon, but in uh, five and 10,000 metre races. The second half of the race has been run much faster than the first. That has been a trend. Things have been happening that way. You know, in all the middle distance races, five and 10,000 metres, half marathon and marathon, it seems like that's what's been happening. Without a pacemaker, that is. Once they get pacemakers, they try to run even pace. But when it's a competitive race, then they've been running the second half faster than the first half. And I would suggest that the next 5,000 metres, or later in the race, the 5,000 metres will be much faster than that 16.27 that we saw there. They could run a minute faster than that. That's what Steve Monaghetti would have run much faster than a minute faster than that when he ran his 2.855 in Tokyo early, earlier this year. That's number 248, the athlete from the Falkland Islands, Hugh Marsden. He's, been, he's, he's here to let the world know that the Falkland Islands is still British, is still part of the Commonwealth. His other teammates are in the shooting event, and he said in an interview that because nobody will notice the shooters from the Falkland Islands, I hope that my time on the road will attract some attention to say we're still proud to be British, even 12 years after the Falklands War. Enter the plinth overhead, you could hear, and you also might have heard some thunder in the background. Heading back along the coastal road, Dallas Street. Beacon Hill Park. Lovely part of the city. The Rickson of Wales, 520, on the near side, Peter Mayor of Canada, then Carol of Australia, that's this. Of England, Kambala, Uganda. Dave Buzzer of England. to a lot of the uh, joggers, the fun runners, dozens of them out each day on the edge of Beacon Hill Park and on the other side of the road on the coastal path. This is as nice a place as any I've ever seen in the world for training and you see the very large numbers of people out running. They couldn't get better conditions for the marathon but you could get better conditions for a training run on a Sunday morning. The marathon runners will be delighted though about this, keeping them cool. The pace, not a lot happening yet. Well within their capacity. And there you can see in the background the flag on the top of Beacon Hill. Beacon Hill Park was used. They used to light the fires on the, on the, on the top of that hill to guide the ships into the difficult strait which leads into Victoria Harbour. And there we're looking at number 311, Nyan Basso. Kenyan, who won the Mombasa Marathon this year, run 2.12, a little bit off the pace there, a little bit off the pack, gradually working his way back to it.
passing uh, mile zero at the start of the Trans-Canadian Highway. Well, the Trans-Canada Highway goes from the Pacific to the Atlantic, 5,000 miles in length, and has been often used in the past by some famous Canadian athletes raising money. One of them, Steve Fonio, raised $13 million. The one-legged runner ran across Canada and inspired the nation, raised $13 million for charity, for cancer charities, because he was suffering, he lost his leg through a cancer illness. And since then, the Trans-Canada Highway has become the focal point of many runs, including the British Commonwealth Games torch, which was carried across Canada a long time along the Trans-Canada Highway. Three Canadians in that pack. Bruce Deakin, 109. Kerry Nelson, 122. And Peter Mayer, 158. All three Englishmen. All three Australians. A couple of Kenyans. One just slightly off this group, but uh, only a matter of metres. Two men from Zimbabwe, Mataki. Gambaza. They're in the old green. I'm just looking at Pat Carroll on the near side. I don't think I've seen a marathon runner with such a high knee lift. Usually that's the track athlete technique. He's a sub four minute miler. And you can imagine him running on the track, looking like that. But in a marathon, you waste a lot of energy lifting your knees and lifting your body weight off the ground. Normally, marathon runners tend to have a low action. A shuffle in some occasions. But Pat Carroll looks very comfortable at this pace, as he should, way below the times he can run for five and 10 kilometers so far. Right behind Pat Carroll, Steve Monaghetti, is a very hot favourite for this race, but does regard Pat Carroll just ahead of him as one of his big dangers. Colin Moore, the Yorkshireman, alongside Steve Monaghetti, Dave Buzzer, number 231 from Cornwall, on the other side of Monaghetti, and Dale Rickson, number 520, the Welshman from Cardiff Athletic Club. Important time check, 10,000 metres. A 
and the runners are just approaching the 10,000 metre mark and once again they'll be looking down on the ground for it and they'll be looking for a, a split time because the 10,000 metre mark is the second significant point for these marathon runners. I still think the pace is quite steady, quite leisurely, about 2.17 pace or so. And we're looking at their number two, the athlete from Antigua, Cordova Simon. The main bunch, over 32 minutes for the first 10,000 metres. So nothing's happened in the second 5,000 metres here. And Dave Buzzer just stretching out a little, just feeling his legs out. 32 minutes for the first 10,000 metres. Well, that's about 2.17 pace. And we're just waiting for an official split here. And I think they're approaching it just about now. There's the check. The last five, well, only three seconds different to the first five, 16.14. So very, very even pace indeed. Dave Busser now taking them along. Steve Monaghetti in the dark glasses, the favourite in fourth place. And the thoughts of Steve before the race when he uh, anticipated the 10,000 metre point. The stage where I really start to feel like this is a, a marathon and I've settled into the race is probably uh, through 10K because then you've got a good indication of the, the pace and especially on this course because we do... Uh, four circuits that are roughly 10k in distance anyway so first 10k is really just uh, settling in and at that stage here yeah, you're thinking right i'm in my rhythm i'm in the pack people that are serious are around and you're very much aware of the uh, the time the splits and the people in the group that you're running with well that's uh, just the way it's working out just settling again is the right phrase I just noticed Steve, uh, Dave Buzzer checking his watch. But if you check your watch in between markers, it doesn't tell you very much. Maybe he was just checking to see what time of day it was. I think he was having a word with Pat Carroll. Buzzer. Slightly in front. 46 is Carroll. 233, Colin Moore of England. 21, Steve Monaghetti. 245, Mark Hudspeth. 109. Deacon of Canada, 520, Dale Rickson of Wales. Well, I'm just thinking back when these athletes qualified for the, for the championship this year, they had the choice whether to run in Helsinki in the European Championship Marathon or in Victoria here for the Commonwealth Games. And I remember the day a couple of weeks ago when Richard Naroka ran that fine race in, in uh, Helsinki and I just think that the boys who chose to run today got the better conditions for a marathon. The gardens in Bickerdale Park beautifully manicured. The flower arrangements in the public parks and public areas are a real feature of these Commonwealth Games. And indeed, always, I'm told, a feature of life in Victoria. Now they're heading along the harbour, almost to complete the first lap. Interesting to hear Steve Monaghetti say that he considers the first lap, the 10 kilometre lap, there he goes into the lead just to get his drink. The drink numbered 10, just after 10 kilometres. Drinks numbered so the athletes can put their own concoctions in them. Some of them like carbohydrate drinks, some of them like plain water, and some of them like electrolyte replacement drinks. They all got what they wanted. They're not too worried about sponges today. They're more worried about taking liquid on board. There's Mark Hudspeth there, number 245. Looking comfortable, ignoring the drink station there. Relaxing into the race alongside Steve Monaghetti, the silver medalist from Auckland last time. Monaghetti's got his drink sensibly arranged. Not easy to drink on the run, but uh, you need those straws, ideally. I 
not as a sand brenda boy every athlete doesn't uh, get a bottle like what he gets he's got there it's so much easier to take on board it certainly is and there once again the view of the superb empress hotel overlooking the harbor still the big group there together including three australians three englishmen and the one Welshman there, Dale Rickson, who's literally just come back from Boulder, Colorado, where he's been training with his Welsh colleague, Steve Jones, who's a British record holder for the marathon, number 520 there, Dale Rickson. Six weeks at altitude, so this should be a good performance from Dale Rickson, and he'll be very happy the way the race is going. Mark Hutz is very competitive there, running alongside Steve Monaghetti as they head down for the second time along Wharf Street. seeing on the television Morpeth, all the Morpeth Harriers have been for their run this morning and then they'll be crowded around this television to give their teammate Mark Hutzberg a cheer running a fine race so far in his first international marathon the first games marathon where his tutor Jimolda excelled in 1966 when he won the Commonwealth Games Marathon in Kingston, Jamaica support around the course for all the various countries involved in this leading pack. Monty Getty on the far side appears to be stepping it up. As he said, first 10,000 meters, you settle in. He looks like a man who's beginning to race. Turning towards Johnson Street Bridge. on the first uh, thousand meters of the second loop. Like Steve said, you're just settling into the race, just getting the rhythm going, just getting out the feelers, seeing how you feel. Is everything going to plan? climb away from that bridge. It's one of the undulations on the course that Steve Monaghetti he said he personally quite enjoys. The slight incline and the slight downhill runs which is going on now. None of the climbs are very severe and they drop down under the railway bridge there and then they climb again out the other side. Steve Monaghetti is renowned as an excellent hill runner. The man from Ballarat mining town 60 miles away from Melbourne. The conditions for Steve Monaghetti, well, he suffered in the last two major games, in the Olympic Games in Barcelona and in the World Championship in Tokyo. Really hot weather conditions didn't suit Steve Monaghetti at all. But the weather today, the cold, the cool and the rain, well, he couldn't have judged it better. He couldn't have prayed for anything better than this. Well, the real business has started now. Steve Montagetti has been joined out here by his wife and uh, new baby daughter. That spit looks uh, very easy the edge of the shop. 25, won the Morpeth to Newcastle road race last year. Famous race held on New Year's Day. Also, he won the 3 A's Half Marathon Championship this year. Well, the 
forecast early this morning was uh, light rain. It turned out to be heavy rain. Weather news is now it's stopped. It's not expected back. And there's the Falkland Islands athlete who's got three teammates here and a team manager and they were had a press conference the other day. The team manager said that Hugh Marsden, whose best time is 2.57, if he's not back within three hours, we're going off to breakfast. We're going to leave him alone. this year. Time, 2 hours, 12 minutes, 12 seconds. Monaghetti on the far side, Australia. Hudspeth, England in the centre. Carroll, Australia. And Nyambato, the Kenyan. And really, in the, suddenly, in the last 2,000 metres, the group has been reduced drastically. Mark Hudson there, number 245, the Englishman, looks to be keen to take them on in this race. I was talking to his coach, Jimmy Alder, the other night, who told me that he'd been running almost 20 miles a day, 130 miles a week, in preparation for this race. He was as fit as he's ever been. He broke one of Jim Alder's own course records on a training run in Morpeth, just before he left here. And uh, that's always a good sign, because Jim could always run 212 in a marathon. So Mark Hudson's obviously feeling good, running between the two Australians. He'll have read about Steve Monaghetti, he'll have watched Steve Monaghetti. I remember Steve Monaghetti setting a world half marathon best in the Great North Run, where Mark Hudson was just a spectator that day. But he's not overawed, and that's a good sign for a young athlete to come to a major championship and just do your own running. Dale Rickson, just behind them, running a good race so far. And Monaghetti just gradually applying the pace He's such an experienced mar marathon runner, Steve Monaghetti. He's not going to do anything silly. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's running very smoothly, as is Pat Carroll alongside him, number 46. You can tell by the athletes' attitudes. But they're beginning to work. Face is now set. One two two is uh, Gary Nelson, the Canadian. One oh nine, Bruce Deacon, another Canadian. And Basu, three one one, elite twenty three. If you see a man in a Kenyan vest in a distance race. No matter if you've never heard of him before, you've got to show some respect. Run one marathon, nine battle and won it. 